Is the lighting okay? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CFL legend, Johnny Sears Jr., man. What's up, man? What's going on, man? Great to be here. It's great, man. It's been decades ago since I've heard your name pop up, man. Man, <laughs> dude. Man, dude, so um, it's intriguing that you came a long ways and you played CFL football, but you started off going to Edison High School first, right? Yeah, actually, actually, I uh, um. I started off at McLean High School first. Ooh, um, okay. Yeah. Well, my first two years, I started off at McLean High School, and then um, I ended up transferring and moved back home, and that's when I um, went to Edison High School to finish up my um, junior and senior year. Oh, okay. So you were there from there, and then you just went to Edison. But what was it definitely like to play for Tim Badano, man? Man, it was great, man. It was great um, to be back home, to play for alumni, um, he brought that juice, um, ex NFL star. You know what I mean, um, arguably could be a Hall of Famer. Um, when he when he came, he brought some of that leadership. He brought that uh, USC tradition. Um, gave us a different uh, perspective on what, how to think, playing the game. And then him knowing the people he knew, um, he was able to take us places when we go to trips in the summer and seven on seven stuff like that. Be able to connect with those big coaches. Yeah, like he just gave you that dog mentality. Like when anybody plays Edison High School, they look at like, oh man, a lot of it, a lot of tough guys out there, man. Anytime they had that team on that schedule, man, you guys were were no joke, man. You guys were dogs out there. Yeah, man. Um, and one of the guys that really helped when Tim came really helped all the kids kind of you know galvanize behind him and and do what they wanted to do was Tony Perry. Rest in peace. Um, he definitely brought in the soul of the soil for the West side and for Edison high school. And man, with those two together, it was like the sky was the limit. Man, that's tough, man. Especially for, for those guys that influenced you. It takes a lot from those guys that gave you a lot back in this community and you done it towards that next chapter. I mean, what was it like to just get an offer at Michigan, man? Cause I, I've seen you attended there, right? Yeah, man, it was, uh, it was surreal. It was uh, when it happened. It felt like a movie. Um, how it happened, it wasn't supposed to happen with the circumstances. But um, man, getting out scholarship was a dream come true. Um, to be honest, that was an actual dream of mine to come from high school and play for my favorite college, and to be able to have that opportunity, it was a no brainer. Man, going to Michigan, yeah, that's a that's a really good one right there because that's one of the top big 10 in the conference. There's like a lot of good teams in that conference. You can even say the big 12, the sec, those are like the great college compared to Fresno state. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, there's no knock on, um, Fresno state, but, um, I wanted to, I wanted to get out of, out of town. And again, I set my goals really high. So, you know, shoot for the moon, fall on the stars type of thing. And so, um, um, with Coach Tony Perry, I was able to showcase my skills in front of a couple of coaches, and the Michigan coach was one of them. And at a camp, and then after that, he kind of kept tabs, and I really kept my work ethic high. And Coach Tony Perry put me in a position to where it was possible, and I got a chance to talk to um, Coach Lloyd Carr. Um, my recruiter was Ron English, um, D coordinator for Michigan. And man, when the when the opportunity presented itself, I jumped on it. I jumped on it. Yeah, it had to be, man. Wasn't it kind of crazy to just have yourself on a video game where you're just like on, like if you go on Michigan, you're you're on the DB on the game, bro. That was crazy. Oh, yeah, man. NCAA 04, NCAA 05. Um, hey, I played that out. Me and my boys on campus played that out because, uh, and that was when they start the 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 player where you get to start and you get to blink when you when you're hot, and um, man. So living a dream again. I'm making sure they put my name on it because they didn't put our names on it yet because they had the NIL back then. So 
Um, just, you know, going at, and you don't have to really create your God. You can let, you got to create your attributes, right? To what you think you're supposed to be, but man, to play with yourself on a game, man, that was a dream come true. Yeah, it is. Especially with your playing on the field, man, that not everybody can say that, but, um, was there like any other NFL team dream that you always wanted to play for, but you know, opportunities come around, like it is what it is. I mean, my favorite team is the Raiders. So I was a homer. Um, and then, you know, besides them, it would probably be any team that I felt that I had a great player on. So I was a Raiders. I was a Raiders through and through. Um, and then after that, I just followed great players um, around the league that I look up to. But um, um, to be able to touch the league is just as little as I did was a great experience. And I would trade it for nothing. Yeah, but then after that, like after you were in Michigan, you transferred, right? You had a transfer? Yes, after my time at Michigan, um, transferred, um, came home for a couple of years. Um, things happened. You know, I was mature back then. I didn't manage to finish my school out at Michigan and then came home, had to take classes. And then I got another chance and I went back to Eastern Michigan to finish up my schooling and my football. Yeah, you still had an opportunity to go finish at another college. And then is this accurate where you did sign with the Bengals as an undrafted free agent or, or is that somebody else? No, it's, it's accurate. So um, that second chance of being at Eastern, I was able to kind of get back into the groove and show people I'm still playing and how good I am. And I got a chance to undrafted free agent for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Um, uphill battle, but I wasn't training experience for nothing. Um, I came into a, a loaded cornerback um, roster and I hung on and as uh, long as I possibly could with the numbers and everything else with just my play. Um, I learned from the coaches um, when I was able to talk to a few of them um, a few years after that. And they said, uh, logistically, I was supposed to get cut after the first or second cut. But I made it just because how I played and my attitude and how I went about my business and how I competed against the high level guys that was there. And at that time, um, Carson Palmer was still slinging it. Um, Chad Ochocinco was still going. And uh, we brought in um, Terrell Owens at the time. And you, as you can see now, he's still running. <laughs> so um, it was a, a great experience for me. And it kind of propelled me for the long season I had in the CFL because of that. Yeah, that's the intriguing part. You were able to get those experiences, and then it just led you to go to CFL. But what made you change change your decision just just to take that opportunity over there? Actually, it wasn't it wasn't really a change of decision. It was uh, kind of the circumstances that happened. So, um, being in the NFL is cutthroat. You know, they don't really play too many games as far as hanging around. So, I, unfortunately, I got injured, and being that I was undrafted free agent and I wasn't signed yet, they was able to release me. So. After being leased and waiting, I want to say approximately about maybe three weeks, close to a month. Um, I was in contact with one of my coaches from Eastern Michigan who was coaching up in Canada. And so me being being hungry to play, I took the leap and uh went to Canada to play ball. And from then on, man, I just I just ran it. Um it was a passing league. It was made for uh, DBs like me, and it was a fast-paced game, and it kind of fit my game a lot. And so um, being there, I just ran with it, and 11 years later, man, gave me a, a, a great cup. Oh, man, that's good, man. Like, especially, like, it's got to be great experience just to go internationally and be able to explore other cultures. But you went to Winnipeg first, right? Like, which is like one of the top crime rates in the, in the country of Canada. But it must have been pretty nice out there, right? No, no, no. It was, it was, it was great. It was a great experience. Um, yes, it was uh, one of the top crime rates. And then coming from Fresno, it kind of really didn't scare me as much. Um, so I was kind of used to it. So uh, that part didn't really bother me, but. The football town was a great football town, um, a smaller uh, city as far as how Fresno is, and they, they yeah. love their football. But the number one factor, man, it was cold, 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 cold. One of the coldest spots in Canada besides the Saskatchewan. So um, that, coming from Michigan, kind of helped me 
end up at Winnipeg and kind of manage and be able to get through the cold times. Well, it's the it's the environment, the climate that you get used to. You get accustomed to it once you go there, and it becomes a simple transition. So going to Canada was just cold weather. That's all I heard from all those cities. But then Hamilton was another team you went to, right? Yes, Hamilton, Hamilton was the second team I went to uh, around 2015. Um, needed a needed a change of uh, change of scenery, needed a change of voice. Um, I just needed a change to be able to keep progressing and elevating as a player. And um, Hamilton was like a blessing in disguise. I didn't know I was going to run into the guys I ran into and uh, have a coach like Orlando Stein ever, who was a great coach, man, a great mentor in my life and helped me see the game differently, helped me learn the game differently. And um, I learned, I started learning again. And man, Hamilton, I had a ball out there, man. The city was great to me and the team was great to me as well. It kind of gives you that little Edison colors right a little bit with the Tigers. Oh, that That's was, what that it was. is. <laughs> yeah, man, that it kind of went full circle, which is crazy. Um, I couldn't get the number I had, number two. Um, I wanted that number when I got there because of the resemblance and it was the same colors, the same mascot. And we went blacked out just like home. So that kind of that gave me juice every day. Just that alone gave me juice every day. On um, the comparables to same mascot, same colors, and we how we how we dress was like the same uh, outfits for game days as home. And man, that that thing right there, man, I, I, it's it's hard to put in words because you remember high school a lot, and what I went through in high school was was big for me. And to be able to put the colors back on again and kind of resemble that same way, looking in the mirror, it gives you flashbacks. And just coming out before the game, looking at myself and kind of picture yourself as in high school again. And it's just going to go make plays again, but on a bigger scale. Yeah, especially going internationally, going from Canada. It's got to be like one of those good experiences, especially I heard there's a lot of fun stuff down there, even though it's cold weather, man. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially uh, uh, they got a few hot spots, I want to say, especially where you're Ontario, definitely one of them. Montreal is another one, and uh, BC is another one. Um, so I, I managed to get a couple of the good spots um, as far as the uh, the spots in Canada is concerned. And um, I was able once I left Winnipeg and got to Ontario, it was kind of, it was more uh, live friendly for me. It wasn't as close. So I was able to kind of stay a little bit longer, um, more stuff to do out that way, and kind of fell in love with the uh, with the province. Yeah, like uh, Toronto is like one of the biggest cities out there. So it's like there's plenty to do out there. Winnipeg is just like a, like you said, like a regular size city, like Fresno kind of, but just colder, a little bit bigger than. Yeah. I, I've heard that um, Vancouver kind of resembles more of San Francisco. Is that is that true by experience or no? Yes, but it, it'll give you that, um, that San Francisco vibe because the water and it's more chill and the scenery is beautiful. Um it definitely gives you that San Francisco type of vibe if you're coming from the States and coming from California. Um, and definitely the cost of living is the same, just like San Francisco. But, yeah, uh, it definitely correlates. It definitely correlates. Great place to be, though. Great place to live, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of good cities out there. Like, I've heard Calgary is like a nice little country city or something. Yeah, yeah, Calgary, Alberta. Um, it, it's it's great scenery, man. It's a lot of – it's green. It's very green. Um is is very good on the eyes out there. They got a lot of good scenery to watch and, and help you think. And um, man, Canada, I love Canada, man. I never take want to take that experience back. Um, I'm appreciative of what it did to me, and um, that's the second home for sure. Yeah, you're getting those experience. You're having fun with it, man. It gets boring just to stick around the same country, man. You got to mix it up a little bit. Like sometimes some people prefer Mexico or Canada over those type of situations. It's like mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with that. No, you can't, man. Um, get cultured. Um, I was introduced to uh, uh, to Caribbean eating, and now jerk chicken is one of my go-tos. Um, meeting so many different people from around the world. Um, which is great because you get to kind of learn and see the differences. And it was, like I said, like you said, it was a great experience all in all, man. I'm, 
um, Canada is a place to uh, go visit if you haven't before. Yeah, I'm thinking of maybe one day I'll part want to go check it out, man. It's got to be something more different and unique out there. You should, man. You should. It's it's a it's a good place to go visit for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. But man, dude, when you had your um, you had your brother, man. He's a little bigger than you, right? So like playing with this guy, man. This guy had confidence. This guy was just the guy that would just say, hey, "I got this, man." Or he yeah. would just yap a little here and there. But he was a good guy to play with. Yeah, man. Um, to me, to for me, I gave him basically uh, the big brother treatment. Um, always, you know, making sure he know who the big brother was, and in doing so, you toughen the little brother up. You know, he I was the one he played with all the time, so he lost a lot. So when he faced dudes his age, it was it was easy for him, and that was the plan for me. Um, I wanted him to be better than me. I knew he was gonna be bigger than me, so I wanted to make sure he was gonna be twice the player, twice the person. So. Um, yeah, a lot of him doing that is kind of my fault, man. So if he went and ran up on you and, and got you out of practice, it's because he's been getting beaten up at home for years and years. And um, it made him a great player at the end of the day. <laughs> I mean, he just had that tough mentality. He would just get on your face about something, man. I remember this one incident where we were playing against Kerman and everybody wasn't shutting up. And then he just went in top of the seat and just sat up and just said, shut up, you dumb. He told everybody to shut up and the coach couldn't even do shit about it. <laughs> Yeah, man, I thought that, that was one of the funniest ones. Yeah, he was dead serious. Like he told everybody, "Shut up." <laughs> As him, yo, great leader, great yeah, guy, man. great dude. Yeah, I've heard that he's lived down in Georgia lately, but he's been doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, doing real good, man. He was playing for the Columbus Lions. Had a great season out there. A few seasons, actually. Um, he's raising his son, man. Being a great father, both his sons out there. And uh, making sure they in school and taking care of business, man. Great dude. Love my dude, man. Yeah, one hell of a good dude. Even if he was tough on you, he would get on you about it, whether you like it or not, which he he, he had every right to. Right. I, I mean, that comes with the territory, right? The game. The football is a, is a hard sport, so it's, it got to be that way because that's how it's played. Yeah, for sure, man. So what are you currently doing lately since you've kind of, like, been off of football for years? Um, I'm still in football. Um, actually, um, coaching, coaching at my alma mater, coaching over at Edison. Um, it's been great, man. Um, besides coaching at Edison, I coach 707 in the summer. Um, I'm also a personal trainer. Um, so I'm keeping busy, staying around the sports world, staying active. Um, I'm a guy that got to keep busy. Um, always moving, uh, taking kids up and down California and over states to, to show how this football can reward you when you treat it right. And uh, the intangibles that football could bring to you and going to school for free. Um, so I'm just passing down a game that I was gave and giving these kids something I didn't have. Um, a guy that's directly from where they want to go and doesn't see everything that they was trying to see and go through and be able to give them tools to navigate through it and help them get there where they want to go and let them know that it's, it's serious. Um, to get there, you're going to have to do certain things uh, you may not want to. Um, you got to make school first in order to get there in the first place. And so basically just being being a guy that they can, they can talk to and get information from and give it to them. Yeah, you got the experience. You've been there and done it. So you would just give them the best advice they can take from. I mean, um, yeah, man, like it's better to listen to somebody who's been in the same situation than listen to somebody who doesn't have a clue. Right, right. So, um, and I really go off of experiences and I got friends who, still in the league and and coaches that have coached me who's in the league and in college. So um, pretty well-rounded. Um, I just make sure I try to have the answers for them. If I don't, I'll go find the answers for them. Um, but it's not too far off. But, yeah, man, just want to basically be the help to kind of navigate them around the potholes and things like that so they can make it. Yeah, man, that's the way you look at it, man. You just give knowledge, experience, and that's pretty much the best way you can do it, man. Like. Like you said, you'll look for the answers even if you don't, and that's the best way to do it. But um, when I've interviewed some DB coaches, man, I had one of the guys who came from the University of Miami, and he was a DB coach like re like a while back, like Mike Frump. Uh -huh. I think he was one of the best DBs in the country. But he was one of those guys that coached a lot of those guys to be tough. But um, yeah. 
I've coached, I mean, I've actually coached O line in the past, but I've been kind of sticking away for it for a little bit and then played a little semi football for a short minute before I had too much of a busy schedule. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a grind, man. It, it's like no joke, but compared to what you guys had, you you went that extra mile and you took your journey. Guys like me, we just had to play it for fun. We didn't play it for <laughs> money. So it was just a different type of culture. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I say my boys all the time, everybody's story is different. Um, you really don't know what your calling is until you go through it. But I say try to do what you're dreaming to do or what you want to do so you won't try to have no regrets. And um, I just make sure – I bring my experiences, what I know, and how to how to get ready, how to prepare, uh, what it takes to be a top level player um, or a defensive player, and, and, and give that to my kids at this level. Um, the things I learned in college and in pros, um, I give it to them at the high school level, and just mm-hmm. hopefully they soak it all in and use it later, even after my voice isn't heard every day. Yeah, they gotta just pick it up from your knowledge and then they'll eventually take it at some point. Like, you know, we can't all be there forever, but what we can do is just encourage them, motivate them and bring the best out of them. Right. My thing is maximize you t- maximize the time you have now and it will reward you. Yeah. So when you look back at your playing days, man, that that's something you can just say, Hey, I had a good ride. You know, I'm definitely going to pass that knowledge and just take it to the next level. Yeah, shoot, a, a good ride. I had a great ride, man. I had a great ride. I, I lasted longer than I was supposed to last. Um, I made a lot of plays, made a lot of friends. All my peers respect me that I played for, played with, and played against. Um, they all respect my game and how I went about business. And for me, that's the main thing, uh, to be able to call the old teammate or to see an old teammate on the circuit, and they tell my players how I played and what kind of guy I was on the field and off the field and be able to let them know that, you know, it's, it's for real. Um, I can ask for nothing else. Yeah. So if you were to look back in time, what would be the one thing you would fix? And, but even though you can't fix the past, but you know, everybody looks at it and say, I could have did this. Um, that's a good question. Um, mm, That's a good question. I would say I probably would have tried to fake the injury so I could stay at stay at the Bengals. <laughs> if I would have changed anything, but I probably try to fake the injury just the last couple of couple of weeks longer to make that fifty three, man. Um, but it was a hamstring, so you can't really fake that. So, uh, but other than that, man, I feel like you go through experience for a reason. Um, like I said to myself, everybody's story is different. Of course, I would love to be 11 years in the NFL, but I got 11 in the CFL, and, and I'm taking that, and I love that. So um, it's kind of hard. Um, if you would have asked me this like probably about five years ago, I would have had probably a couple of things for you. But, I, you know, I mean, I've moved past, and I kind of really don't think about it. Um, so, um, But all in all, I'll probably just try to figure out a way to, to stay on the roster. Um, I played my way on, so injuries, that was, you know, a controllable factor uncontrollable factor so but that'll be the only thing i changed because uh going through the cnfl i experienced a lot learned a lot seen a lot uh, was able to, to uh, make connections and stuff like that so who knows you know what i mean so but that would be the only thing i can say off the top of my head i'll probably try to change yeah man i mean everybody changes for the better but you know you can't just change it but most people would say if i would have did this this would have been but you know yeah. the should have could have would have right, it, right. It, it just is what it is man but um when you when you played your style of, of game, were you more like a physical feisty cornerback, or were you just more like you do your job assignments? Man, I was uh, I was like I was physical, I was explosive, um, aggressive. Um, how you were to say physical feisty? Yes, uh, in your face, um, hard nosed, um, all over the field, trying to get every tackle I can. Um, let you know what time it is and then show you what time it is and let you know about it while you walk away. Um, very into it, very into it. Really loved the game. And I felt on film it showed. Um, wanted to be a guy that uh, offensive coordinators have the game plan around. And um, after a couple of years, I, I created myself to be one of those guys. And um, just hearing 
you know, my former players that would get on different teams that say, man, we used to have to watch you, man. Coach had to, you know, let us know to watch out for you. And it was a problem for us. Um, that's all, you know, that's all to me was the name of the game. Disrupt everything the offense got going on. Make sure you make your heart on them and, and, and win. Yeah, that's how it is, man. You just got to come up with that feisty mentality. Get it like easy. You got to get under their head mentally a little bit. And that's how most DBs play this game. And they got to get under the receiver's head mentally. Like yeah. Richard Sherman, for example, that dude gets under the people's skin. Right, right. And the thing is, it works when you ball out. So when you ball, the other stuff, you kind of seeps in. Some guys are hard. Some guys, I play guys who don't say nothing. And I can play the same way. But then I met guys who want to pop off and it's thank you, perfect. You that's just what I needed. Um, but yeah, that's the name of the game. It's it's a rivalry, it's an internal rivalry that starts when you wake up every day. Just like a line and gazelle, DB and the receivers do not get along and they're not supposed to. And that's the that's the beauty of the game. Yeah, you're supposed to bring the best out of each other, even if you don't respect one another, you at least bring the best out of the battles and whatever you bring on the field. Yes, yes. Yeah, man. Like, you know, it, it's got to be great that you're able to play for this long. And then, you know, not everybody can play for the NFL. But for those people that are in the same situation as you, what would be the best advice for them to go to the CFL? Um, Just do your homework. Do your homework. Make sure you're ready. Uh, the CFL is not the same game that we're used to playing um, here in the U.S. Um, the little nuances of are very big. Like the waggle with the receivers that can um, line up ten yards off the ball and get a running head start. Um, everybody on the every receiver can move, move at the same time. Not one person has to be stagnant. It's just one person or the, the number of people has to be on the ball, but everybody can move. Um, the the field is bigger in width and in length. Um, we have two twenty yard touchdowns. You have two fifty yard lines, and all that's a different. The goalposts are in front of the end zone. So you can actually be on a 10 and still get beat for a 20 yard bomb. Like it's possible. So it's the nuances of the game and learning the rules are very big to be able to play, play a good style of football in the CFL. I've seen guys from the NFL who came in and spit them and chewed them out. And I've seen guys come in here and flourish. So you have to be, an all-around player and be able to adapt and adjust to the new game and the new rules. Yeah, usually they've been making new rules that's against DBs, and it's always been kind of unfavorable at times. But like you said, it takes a lot for those good DBs to adjust and play it smart. But the new circumstances under the CFL, like you said, has changed lately, right? Yes, yes. Um, it's just like so – just like just like um, high, the waggle, right? The waggle is – they're running the head start before the line, just like um, um, indoor football. But instead of one guy, you got four guys. Now, for a defender, it's still the same old normal thing as you can't touch him after five yards. So if I'm playing man-to-man -man press coverage, I got to get my hands on you within the five yards. But you have a 15-yard to 10-yard running head start. So your press is going to be a lot different. And you got to stay on top. So it's the game is different. It makes you bring out, like, your your ability of what you can do. It will test everything you have. Um, it's, a, it's a lot harder. It's a lot more running. You have to be in a lot more shape. And the fact that it's only three down football, the turnover is fast, very fast. So being in shape and being able to run, is the number one factor. Yeah, it, it is. But what was different then about when you played CFL? Was it just the contact all out there or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, the difference now and then, yeah, it was a lot very a lot more contact was able to get away with. Um, I remember a few times I hit a few people in the face and no penalties called. And then as I've been playing, the same hits got outlawed. Um, just like everywhere in football, um, I think it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of the – Big contact hits they're trying to take out of the game, but it's still football, so it's imminent. It's like it's going to happen. But they're making it harder on defenders to tackle because of the strike zone and stuff like that. So um, that's probably 
one thing that's changed in the CFL, the CFL, I feel, is still more physical than the NFL because of the rules and how it's played. Um, but as far as when I played there, just small thing as far as the strike zone, uh, defenses player, like crack back hits and stuff like that. Yeah, a little different. But what, what's your thoughts of the USFL? Have you seen some of those games or no? Yeah, I have. I have. I, I feel like it's great. Um, some more football for me. Um, another brand, another, another chance to give guys opportunities to play, um, to showcase their skills. Football is America's game. Um, and it's the world's game, I think, because it's the it's the direct correlation of how life goes. Adversity is almost happens all the time, and that's a guarantee. And to be able to turn the page and keep going after it, that's the direct correlation of the game of football. And so that's why um, you see people galvanize to it a lot because of that and the beauty of the game and the intensity, the passion that you have to have to play that game. You can't really half-ass it or put a little bit into it in football. You got to put your all into it to actually just stay healthy and to play a good brand of football. It, uh, it takes a lot, and I think that's one of the, the great things about it. Yeah, it is, man. But I think when you watch USFL, there's those contexts that are very legal at, than what the NFL wouldn't allow, you know? Yeah, because of the change of it. Um, and then – um, it's less money involved, so you can't really find guys like you do in the NFL. Um, that plays a huge, huge part into it. Um, you can't really take money from guys that you're not giving that much to. And so to, um, to be able to find you for something that, you know, is kind of part of the sport, as much as you want to take it out of it, it's part of the sport. Um, you just got to try to manage as best you can. Yeah. So what what if it, if they had it then? Like, let's say you still had a career, but let's say USFL gave you a call for an opportunity to play. Would you have taken it instantly or nah? Um, it depends on what I'm doing now. Um, I know I can play for sure, but um, I've been invested in, in these boys I deal with now um, here in my hometown. So it would be kind of hard to leave them. It would have to be a, a – yeah, it had have to make sense for me. Um. But I definitely am able to run around and make some plays happen. It's just a mere fact of doing it at the right time and not, True. you know, and not leaving my guys out to dry that I've been working with for the last few years. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, do I know it's been kind of going for your time, but bro, I definitely appreciate you going on. I know you probably got some stuff to do, man. But hey, definitely looking forward to what you're doing. Uh, good luck on your coaching. With the team, bro. I know you got a good squad going on. I know this is a team that builds up like dogs out there, man. And you and you got that fire, bro. So I respect the grind because you went to Michigan. You went to a lot of schools, bro. It takes a lot to be where you're at, man. Man, I, was, I appreciate the time, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, thinking about having me on this, man. Um, I have no problem talking about football, talking about what's going on. But, yeah, man, being at my alma mater at Edison High School, you got time. Check us out, man. We're trying to bring uh, that winning and dog culture back um, to Edison and, and, and it's on its way, if not here now. So be on the lookout, man. So we we here. we here to stay. For sure, man. But um, thank you for being on. And maybe down the road, if you have the extra free time, maybe you can come on in, man. I like oh, having so. everybody. That, I like the football talk. I like what everybody does, man. You had a journey. Everybody had a journey. It's just a different story, but great kind of feeling right there, you know. Thank you, man. Anytime, man. Just holler. We can work it out for sure. All right, man. And as always, guys, CG Ruthless and Johnny Sears Jr. is out, and we'll catch you guys later. Peace.